In our unit on reproduction, we learned that sometimes organisms reproduce asexually by dividing to produce two new identical cells. But in order for this to happen, there's a key step that occurs before cell division, and that step is replicating the DNA. This is crucial because it ensures that the two new cells both have a copy of all the genetic information. So in this video, we're going to explore the process of DNA replication. We're going to see that DNA structure enables it to replicate itself very quickly and very accurately. And this is one reason why DNA, and not another molecule, is the basis of our genetic code. Let's start by reviewing DNA structure. Here is a DNA molecule. It's a double helix because it has two strands uh, coiled around. Now we're going to zoom in on just one section of this double helix so we can take a closer look. So here we are zoomed in. We can see that there's different smaller molecules within DNA. For example, there are phosphates. There are also sugars, specifically deoxyribose. That's what the D in DNA stands for. And then there are nitrogenous bases, specifically four different types, A, T, C, and G. And you can see that these base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds are weak, and that's going to be important in a little bit. Now, the basic building block of DNA is a nucleotide. And every nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. And note that the bases follow a rule when they pair together. G always goes with C, and T always goes with A. This is known as the complementary base pairing rule, and it's also going to be important to DNA replication. So to sum up, the basics of DNA structure. All right, now we're ready to see how that structure helps DNA replication occur quickly and accurately. So to look at DNA replication, we're going to zoom in on a cell, and within that cell, we're going to be in the nucleus. Within the nucleus, we're going to take a look at a chromosome, specifically a gene, even more specifically, just a little section of DNA within that gene. So here is that small DNA molecule that we're going to focus on. The first step to DNA replication is this. Enzymes unwind the DNA helix. So instead of a spiral staircase, now we have more of a ladder. The next step is this. Enzymes unzip that ladder, and they do so by breaking the weak hydrogen bonds. So it's pretty easy to tear the ladder apart. The third step is where things get really interesting. Now remember that we're in the nucleus, and in the nucleus there are free nucleotide subunits just floating around. So in step three, an enzyme is going to add these subunits, these nucleotides, to the original DNA strand. And as you can see, it's pretty easy for the enzyme to do this because it just has to find the complementary base. And what we have here is that each strand from the original molecule is serving as a template to copy from for the new molecules. So this, again, makes DNA replication really quick and really accurate. Here are the parental template strands, and here are the new daughter strands. Finally, in step four, to increase accuracy, some other enzymes are going to come along and proofread the new DNA molecules, just to make sure that there were no mistakes. And if they do see mistakes, they'll go ahead and fix them. Again, note that our two new molecules are identical to each other, and each molecule contains one parental strand and one daughter strand. Because of this, DNA replication is said to be semi-conservative because in each, each new molecule, half of it is conserved, half of it is original, and half of it is brand new. And it's this semi-conservative strategy for DNA replication that makes it so quick and so accurate. And that concludes our introduction to DNA replication.